Welcome once again to the Friday Beer Break. We're at the Amsterdam Brew House, 245 Queens Key West. Over there, the one and only Mr. Chris Schreier. I'm Chris Schreier, TorontoBeerBlog.com. Uh, Ian Macustra, a brewer at the Amsterdam Brew House. All right, now we came out to the patio, we got a table, you put these menus down in front of us, and we ordered the Richmond and John. First of all, explain how this thing all came to be, because this is fantastic. Sure. Uh, I thought it'd be pretty cool if we named all of our flights after our old locations. We've changed locations quite a bit in Toronto over the years, so uh, first location was Richmond and John. And is that why the beers here are like the signature beers that everybody who drinks Amsterdam immediately identifies Yeah, it's like brand. local favorites, right? So uh, today we have uh, our Blonde Ale, our, our Blonde Lager rather, our local lager, 416, a Rancho Vice, and our Raspberry Wheat. Now, the first year we were doing these, I got the, the orange one. And I remember being like, ooh, I feel all fancy drink that. You gave me like three massive bottles of that stuff. It was incredible. That was the very first TorontoBeerBlog.com Edge beer break. Wow. It was, it was orangey vice. I had a case of it and I brought it in and I said, do you want some beer? It was a good time. Now, what do we, what, anybody who's been to the Everything to Do with Fred show or Fred Fest or whatever it's even called now <laughs> uh, has had plenty of the blonde. They always have this at the Sound Academy. But uh, where do you want to start? Well, let's start with 416. So it's... Oh, uh, you're, you're, you're tripping me out here. Yeah. Starting in the middle. I like yeah, that. Well, I mean, we're going to try one. 416, there we go. Oh. Nice. Very, very classic, as always. So now, what's Cascade and Sriracha hops? I feel like I'm a real beer critic, because it's all written right here on the Yeah, menu. yeah, totally. It's uh, two new, uh, well, one US and one Japanese uh, hop variety. Is and Sriracha... It's just like, sorry. Sorry, it's just got like a slight citrus note to it. It's more about like easy drinking, clean flavors. But drinkability is really like the number one thing with this beer. Are sriracha hops actually from Japan? Yeah. I, okay, cool. I so how old hop, is the Japanese brewing tradition? Is this like what well, you they, could they call it? In, yeah, I'm, I'm sure we grow them now yeah, exactly. in North America. They, they did originate in Japan. Uh, in answer to your question, Fred, and Ian, you can chime in here. Um, you've run into some interesting stuff. So Japanese um, like beer microbrewing is existent, and actually um, BIM from DigiSale in Montreal has a brewery now in Japan doing some cool stuff. But what's funny um, is sake, which people think of as rice wine, is you could say technically beer because it's a fermentation of grain. It's not fruit. Um, so if you look at it in that sense, Japanese people have been making beer for, I don't know, hundreds of years, thousands of years. I don't know how old sake is. I always but thought that like beer came to Japan from Europe. This kind of beer probably did, but I'm saying like rice wine, strictly speaking, isn't really wine. It's a fermentation of a grain, so it's more like beer, not like wine. So Touche. Like so. Now what, on the on the end we got the raspberries, right? Yep, raspberry wheat. This is actually like, you could almost say an old, an old favorite for the brewery. Uh, I started off brewing at KLB uh, 13 years ago, and this was like a massive beer back in the day, summer beer. You know, it was really something new to people, it was a different style, and the slight hint of raspberry, the slight sweetness, clean flavors, really, really appealed to people. Why is it almost always when you're dealing with like a flavored beer, it's almost always a wheat beer? Mm. It's the texture of the wheat that the wheat malt imparts on the beer goes really, really well in supporting okay, yeah, the I, The yeast as well has some impact on that too, right? There's some spiciness that goes well with a lot of the fruits. Well, this is a clean fermenting yeast. Oh, okay. So it, the idea with this is to really let like the raspberry kind of show in the in the aroma and the aftertaste. Yeah. And the wheat kind of just supports that a little bit. Now we had the, um, the Duvalin a couple weeks ago with you. Yeah. Similar, like same idea, that was yeah, because I always think of like up. berries, you know. No, I mean that one's just different. Totally different. Oh, okay. I thought it yeah, was. Uh, I thought sure. it was like this, and you just dirty it up in a barrel. No, oh, no, okay. not at all. So now anybody Sorry. who comes down here and they go through the flight tour, which mm -hmm. is, I still think this is just a fantastic setup, they can get all of these at the store. Absolutely, and this is actually one of our, our biggest sellers here. We found that the majority of people on the patio actually order flights. Like it's a constant thing. We're, pushing out flights all day. Well, what's really funny it's for me... It's a great me, way to try all the different beers. Yeah, one of my favorites, and it's long gone now, and I was a little disappointed, although I understand sort of volume constraints, but I remember some of my earliest um, like craft beer experiences in Toronto was going to the brewery, when it was at 600 uh, King West, um, which I think is now a beer market or something like that. Yeah, but yeah. it used to be the, the brewery was right next to a bar, and they served all Amsterdam at the bar, and you go in and you can get the paddles. 
and they bring yeah, out sure. they bring out the glasses on these wooden paddles. And I remember um, drinking. Uh, what was the was it just called wheat back then yeah it was, it was just the amsterdam wheat it was our summer season i remember that it was the first time i had a wheat beer like with the fruit on it and there was avalanche which was like a high proof yeah. ale it was like a strong yeah. ale or something but i would take people because it was this ridiculously good deal it's like you got these two paddles like eight beers or something for like eight dollars or yeah. something like that yeah. and yeah you would drink a lot of beer for not a lot of money and then yeah we would always get a pint as well but uh, so I loved that that you know these tasting pairings were, were something that came back with flights. Well. So that was always to me part of what Amsterdam was. So. And what's fantastic about this is we, we deal with this conversation a lot with people that you know they're used to just drinking their lagers. They want to try something different, but they're worried that if they put like they buy a full pint of something they've never had before, they won't like it. With these flights, you get a little bit of everything, and I guarantee you, one of these cups will be amazing for you. Yeah, I think that's that's really a big part of like the brew pub experience, is being able to try different styles that you normally wouldn't uh, kind of go for the full pint of it. You, know, you want to be able to try something slightly different. Now, you hit it on the head uh, with the whole brew house experience. Come on down to the Amsterdam Brew House, 245 Queen Street West. Queens Get a flight. Queen's Key West. Queen, what did I say? Street. 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 Queens, yeah, that one. Queen's Key West. Get a flight. Try something. You'll love it. I guarantee it.